Welcome back to Films Recapped. Today I will show you an action thriller film from 2012, titled Jack Reacher. Warning! Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy! The movie begins in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, across from the Allegheny River from PNC Park, showing a man feeding a quarter into the parking meter in a parking garage. While overlooking the North Shore Trail of the river, he prepares a Springfield Armory M1A and kills five individuals before packing up and driving away. When the police, headed by Detective Emerson, arrive a short while later, they find a shell casing in the quarter that was used to pay for parking. James Barr, a former sniper for the United States Army, left his fingerprint on the coin. When the police raid his home, they discover the van, the weapon, the reloading supplies, and Barr sleeping in his bed. Barr is given the option of life in prison in exchange for a full confession during questioning by Emerson and District Attorney Alex Roden, or death row since Roden has never been acquitted. They are perplexed when Barr instead writes Get Jack Reacher on a notebook. With no phone, credit card, or email address, Jack Reacher is a ghost. A talented investigator and former Army military police officer, Reacher has shown himself as a capable soldier in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the Balkans. Reacher asks about Barr after he overhears Emerson and District Attorney Alex Roden discussing Barr and the shooting. Reacher requests to examine the proof, but Emerson and Roden agree to only show him Barr, who was attacked by other prisoners and is now in a coma. Reacher meets Helen Roden, the District Attorney's daughter and Barr's defense lawyer, who has been given the seemingly hopeless mission of sparing Barr from the death penalty. Reacher responds that he is not interested in clearing Barr's name when Helen offers him access to the evidence if he agrees to serve as her investigator. He explains that while serving in Iraq, Barr went on a killing spree but was never arrested because the US Army wanted his victims to be forgotten because they were being investigated for multiple rapes. If Barr committed the same offense again, Reacher vowed to eliminate him. If Helen goes to the relatives of the victims to find out more about the people who were killed that day, Reacher promises to look into it. Reacher investigates the crime scene and discovers discrepancies, concluding that a skilled shooter would have carried out the murders from cover of the van on the nearby Fort Duquesne Bridge. Late at night, Sandy comes up to Reacher as soon as he walks inside the pub. At first, he thinks Sandy is just a hooker, but when her pals show up looking for trouble, Reacher gets into a fight with them and uses his excellent hand-to-hand -hand fighting abilities to take them down one by one, which leads to his arrest by the police. Reacher understands that this meeting has been set up and that someone is attempting to get him to end his inquiry. After Helen revealed the identity of all the victims, she later released him and they resumed their investigation. After Helen informs Reacher of her discoveries, he believes that just four individuals were killed at random and that the owner of a local construction company was the intended victim, with the other victims acting as a cover-up. Then Reacher demands Barr's credit card information as well as a list of the locations James Barr frequently visits, such as shooting ranges. Reacher looks for Sandy the following day and discovers her at work. She asserts that someone by the name of Jeb gave her the order to seduce Reacher at the club that evening. Based on this knowledge, Reacher visits Jeb's home to carry on his investigation. There, Reacher is attacked by several men, but he succeeds and beats them. Unfortunately, Jeb isn't there because the same individuals who killed the other five victims also killed him a few days ago. Reacher is convinced that James Barr is innocent based on the independent evidence he has gathered. He asserts that a proficient sniper like Barr would prefer to fire from a bridge above a freeway rather than from a parking garage. He never needs to leave the van, there is no camera up there, no proof is left behind, and his getaway is quick. They uncover the main scheme after viewing the paperwork of one victim regarding the construction firm Olina Archer's lawsuit against Levendauer Enterprise. Later, Sandy is killed by Charlie and his men, and Reacher is accused of the crime. The police, under the direction of Detective Emerson, are pursuing him with vehicles and helicopters. He exits the vehicle and ducks behind a crowd of people who are patiently awaiting the bus. He is now evading the police chase as a result. Then, Emerson and Roden visit Helen's office in an effort to learn more about Reacher's whereabouts, but she won't provide it and doesn't think Reacher killed Sandy. Reacher calls Helen out of the blue to let her know that one of them, either Roden or Emerson, is involved in this case and cautions her from speaking with them. Reacher stops by the shooting range where James Barr used to practice. When he first meets the owner, Martin Cash, he asks about James Barr. On the other hand, Martin initially seems hesitant, as if he doesn't want to admit the truth. Reacher is able to negotiate an agreement, though, is required to show off his proficiency by firing three shots into the middle of the target. Martin will talk about James Barr and share all that he knows if Reacher is successful. Reacher accepted the challenge and succeeds, firing all three shots straight through the middle. James Barr, according to Martin, was his best shooter. The real shooter, Charlie, a close friend of James Barr's, is then shown to Reacher on a security camera footage and in other pieces of evidence. Helen is talking to her father and thinks he might be involved. 
she just understood that Emerson had been involved the entire time. She is brought by Emerson to former political prisoner Zek Chelevek. A gang working under the cover of an authorized construction company are the real offenders. Reacher calls Helen's number, and Charlie picks up the line. He was close to murdering Helen. Reacher goes to Martin Cash for help because of this circumstance, and they meet at the quarry where Helen is being held hostage. Martin only provides him with a knife and will protect him by disguising himself as a sniper. Reacher calls Helen one more time to make sure everything is alright before approaching the guards. With Martin's assistance from above, Reacher outsmarts the guards by driving a car backwards and killing them one at a time. Reacher and Charlie engage into a fight, and as a result, Charlie and Emerson eventually die. Reacher follows, and he confronts Zek about the plot. Zek admits that whatever prison term Reacher is expected to serve would be very light compared to his time in Siberia, but notes that Reacher has killed the majority of the witnesses against him and questions whether he would be found guilty. Reacher immediately shoots Zek in the head. Reacher and Cash leave the area, sure that Helen will exonerate Reacher. Barr, who emerges from his coma at the conclusion of the film and tells Helen that he has no recent recollection, assumes that he must be responsible for the shootings despite his lack of memory. Reacher's theory is supported by Barr's mental simulation of how he would have carried out the shootings. Barr, who is still in the dark about all of these developments, is prepared to take responsibility and punishment because he worries that Reacher will seek justice if the law does not. It is clear that he will be exonerated of the accusations, nevertheless, Reacher, who is seated on a bus, overhears a man harassing a young woman verbally and physically and gets up to confront him. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.